Hey guys, uh, Sleepy Reader here. Uh, part two of my question and answer uh, videos. Um, so all of these video, all of these questions were asked by viewers of mine um, in the comments of my of my video celebrating celebrating my uh, 100 subscribers. So uh, the next questions set of questions are from Ghost Critic. Um, and Old Ghost Critic has wants to know, in my opinion, what has been the best thing and the worst thing about the new DC-52? Um, and I guess the worst thing, is that's the easy part, the worst thing is what they've done to Superman. I don't know what went wrong there, but it went really wrong, starting with the costume and then everything else. Um... But maybe more, you know, that can be fixed. And, and maybe more more of a problem with the new 52 is the way they got all weird with the continuity. You know, s things starting five years ago, s things starting now, and with a backstory that we don't know yet. Um, some continuity from the old stories in some of the series continuing. Um, so that's also screwed up. And yet, the new Fifty Two was the uh, was the ideal chance to to you know really simplify things and start from the beginning and continue from there and fix all you know make all continuity make sense. So I think that's the biggest screw up of the new Fifty Two. Um, the other bad thing is I. Although it doesn't impact me much, I feel bad for the really loyal DC readers who just got screwed by everything getting thrown out um, and by you know things that were good or that were great uh, just going by the wayside and being restarted and sometimes not being so good anymore. Um, so I mean, that's kind of sad. Um, it's too bad there wasn't some other way they could, you know... Uh, jumpstart their sales and everything but it seems to have been in in most ways it seems to have been successful um you know because i because a lot of people are now able to to really get into dc comics and it's really easy to follow you know there's no problem if you if you're interested in a comic book uh to get the last 10 issues of it it's easy to it's very appealing. It's a very appealing uh, a thing for for readers, and it it bring. I think it brought a lot of us back, or focused a lot of us on DC. And uh, I've been really pleased. You know, I've just I've read a lot of good comics from the DC New Fifty Two. Um, there's many I avoid, but but uh, I've read some good stuff. So uh, so that's the DC New Fifty Two for me. Then a uh, ghost critic asks. You can kill off a ma main major character from DC and Marvel. Who are they and why? Okay. Uh, from DC, there's actually a lot of DC characters that could be killed off. From DC, I think Plastic Man should be killed off for good. Um, and my reason is he he's just, he's a character from the past. He's at his best in the milieu that he he started in that 1940s you know he's the wild card in the middle of these 1940s crime comics and i just think he hasn't really been worth doing since then um so i you know and i think there's certain creators who could take plastic man and do a lot of fun things with him but most of the time it's a disappointment and it, it's just better if he died and stayed dead and we remember the best of Plastic Man, you know, from the Jack Cole days. So that's who I'd kill off from DC. From Marvel, Eesh. who would I kill off? The funny thing is I think of killing people and then I realize, oh, they've already been killed. Uh, DC, Marvel's killed them or DC's killed them and brought them back to life. So I feel kind of funny saying, oh, kill them off for good because we know they won't, and they haven't. Um, I think they should try killing Namor. Uh, I've had times like Namor, but maybe, you know, he's run his, 
run his uh he's had some good runs and um and we don't really need him around he just doesn't make sense they try to reboot him as a mutant and everything and it it's just a little sad i i would just kill him off and move on um so there you have it for those what comic character would you like to see made into a movie that this these are still questions from ghost critic so what comic book character title would you like to see made into a movie that hasn't already been made? My first thought was The Spirit. Wait a minute. I did make The Spirit movie. <laughs> and it was a terrible disaster. But deep in my heart, I feel there could be a really good Spirit movie. Um, so other ones that they haven't made into movies... Uh, I not, my mind jumped to New Gods, but I'm sure they would screw that up royally. It might be a lot of fun to do Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'd love it if they did it in a kind of semi-psychedelic Jim Starenko-influenced way. Um, but, you know, all of the movie, all of the current Avengers-based deep Marvel movies are kind of partially about Nick Fury, so I guess that's not really... Uh, a new movie idea. So my my last try here is uh, Magnus Robot Fighter. I think he could be really cool um, if done right. Just done is fun. Futuristic kung fu robot smasher. Um, it could be a lot of fun. Have you had a crush on a comic book character? And if so, who? Well, as a boy, <laughs> there were a number of uh, comic books that I found rather enchanting. <laughs> and um, probably number one amongst those would be Red Sonja. Um, there's the chainmail bikini. There's the fact that she's a little scary. Um, I think I love the way John Buscema drew her. And I, I think there were, if if you're at all familiar, and some maybe only older people are, with the long John Buscema run on on um, Conan, the women in that, in general, were very enticing to me as a teenage boy. Um, so I had brief crushes on a lot of them. But I, Red Sonia seems to be the one that would stand out. I don't, I kind of, I, I look aghast at the more recent incarnations of Red Sonja because it's just, it was obvious enough in the first place and it's just so far over the board obvious uh, that it's just about selling her, selling her body in the chainmail bikini. But um, anyway, so that worked for me then and I guess that's why Red Sonja is still around because it, she still works for a lot of uh, boys and man boys. Uh, most treasured comic book, uh, again, another, the last question from Ghost, Ghost Critic was, what's your most treasured comic book, comic related possession? And there I fall down on my face. I don't seem to have comic book related possessions. I have a few t-shirts. I have some figurines that I've bought for my daughter to play with. Um, so she may end up with some most treasured comic book related things. Um, but I haven't at all got into collecting things like that. I'd love to collect original comic book art someday if somehow suddenly I could afford that or uh, rare prints or something like that. But at the moment, I don't have any of those. I guess uh, my most treasured comic book related thing that isn't actually a comic book is probably uh, my large number of issues of the Jack Kirby Collector. Um, for a while... I was probably buying these as much as I was buying comic books. <laughs> I uh, just really enjoyed reveling in the Jack Kirby obsession um, and their beautiful um, giant tabuloid sized magazines. So um, uh, something to obsess about if you're obsessed about Jack Kirby. You can find those, comic, those Jack Kirby collector things. Okay, then on to, thanks uh, for those questions, Ghost Critic, on to Mod 1986. 
who asks, I'd love to know what series piqued your interest in comics. Um, and I mentioned in the other video, the very first, um, very first comic book I ever read as a kid was Avengers 92. And um, I guess that peaked that, you know, the very first comic book piqued my interest. I, I, that was the only comic book I had for quite a while. And I spent a lot of time copying the drawings and obsessing over all the costumes and, and the like. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the Neil Adams artwork in that. Um, but then I think Fantastic Four really, as I discovered the Fantastic Four and managed to somehow get into the back issues of that, um, back in the 70s when I was first discovering comics, there were lots of reprints of the Jack Kirby Stan Lee um, Fantastic Four that you would stumble across. And I liked the Fantastic Four con continuity at the time. So that really got me going. And then when my interest was flagging in comics, along came Frank Miller and his Daredevil. And that was brilliant and, you know, kept me, kept me deeply, uh, sucked me deeply back into comic books. And I, I fell in love with comic books. I probably for a couple of years bought every comic book that Marvel published and as many DC ones as I, as I uh, could. Um, so, and then at some other point my interest had faded and then I discovered Planetary um, by Warren Ellis and John Cassidy. And that's a brilliant series of comics and it really reminded me how much I loved comics and piqued my interest and sucked me back in. Uh, so those are just a few highlights. There's a lot of times when, you know, you start to get a little bored with comics or you've gone through a period of time when you're too busy and then something comes along to remind you how much you love comics or how much potential comics have. James Crowder, 77, asks, if you could only read one comic book series, past or present, which one would it be and why? And I guess... You know, another, you know, nearly impossible question, but I guess Fantastic Four. Um, you know, a really long run uh, uh, with lots of good highlights spread out amongst its long history. Uh, Batman, of course, would be another great choice. Um, uh, Avengers would be a pretty good choice. Captain America. Um, I'm picking long, really long running, uh, really long running uh, comics for this. Um, I could, there's tons of shorter run things that, you know, are fantastic series. Thanks for that, James Crowder. Uh, David Lee asks, do you look at comic books differently since you started doing videos on YouTube? And he, he gives his own answer saying, I know I do. And yes, I do definitely approach I def I, I definitely uh, experience comic books uh, somewhat differently since uh, doing these videos I feel like I, uh, I it's more like I'm more in touch with my own self about comic books I don't just read them quickly and shove them aside mentally I, I think about them a little more and uh, you know and I, I've gone through periods, as you probably gathered from these answers, where I've where I've thought about them a lot more than other times. Um, but uh, you know, this is a new way of thinking about them. And doing these videos makes me want to watch a lot of other videos of what other people are doing and saying about it. So all of that mixes together and makes me um, think and rethink about comic books in new ways. Agent 42Q asks, what's your least favorite comic book? And I can't answer for all time, but as of yesterday, it seems to be Iron Man. I read an issue of Iron Man, and I really didn't like it. Um, whose reviews are you watching? And I am watching 
so many reviews or what I'm doing is I'm listening to all the reviews I can listen to while I'm doing other things um, because I'm often at my computer and needing to listen to something while I'm doing some other stuff on the computer. And so anybody's uh, videos who are that are mas not very visual, I will listen to their reviews and maybe occasionally glance at uh, what's going on in the video. So I listen to a huge number. Um, and if I, as I, I'll say some off the top of my head, but I'll be missing so many. Uh, I listen to min or watch Minutia Minute and I watch Odd Fellows reviews. I watch Agent 42Q. I watch Poet Skinny, who's doing more and more reviews. I watch uh, Ghost, Ri Ghost Rider, Ghost Critic. Um, I haven't seen his head turn onto flames yet, so I shouldn't call him Ghost Rider. I watch David Lee, James Crowder, um, Comic Book Uno, uh, James Donnelly. Is it James? I think it's James Donnelly, and he, he does really long reviews, but they're great for listening to because there's nothing visual going on in them. Um, Agent 40 Q, 42Q also asks, what comics are you interested in but haven't read? Which is an interesting question. And uh, off the top of my head, Morning Glories. I'm hearing lots of good stuff about that, and I haven't read it. Uh, the Man Manhattan Project by Jonathan Hickman. I like his writing a lot, so I really should be checking that out, and I hear good things about it. Whisper, I've heard, I think I've only heard one reviewer talk about that, but that sounded really good. Um, Winter Soldier sounds good, and I haven't tried that out. So there, there's, there's a bunch that I haven't tried out, and there's lots of others. Uh, because I'm listening to so many people's reviews, I'm constantly getting ideas for that. Is there a comic topic video? This is another question from Agent 42Q. Is there a comic topic video you're sitting on but haven't done? Um, I'm sitting on digital comics. Uh, I was thinking of doing a video about the pros and cons of digital comics. Uh, but I, I have a feeling that most people in the community know that they don't like digital comics. So I'm not, I sort of put off doing that. Um, I'm sure there's some people who'd be interested in that. So maybe I'll do it at some point. I was also um, thinking about doing videos where I spend some time obsessing about one older comic book that, that I'm particularly obsessed by. Um, and I might do that. It seems less part of the conversation, but, but it would be fun for me to do. So maybe I'll do those eventually. Then Agent 42Q asks, how do you grow that amazing facial hair? <laughs> uh, you know, I shave it off every night. And then I go down, I, I lay, I spend the night in my Lazarus pit. And when I wake up in the morning, I've got this beard. And every morning it's a little grayer. There's more, it's really gray on the sides. You can't even see that. Um, so the gray just creeps in. And I think when, when the last hair turns gray, the Lazarus pit's going to stop working for me. And... Uh, and uh, that'll be the end of me. So uh, the Lazarus Pit only works for a certain amount of time. Then Agent 42Q asks, can I get a whoop whoop? Uh, no, you can't get a whoop whoop. OK, I think I'm going to stop there. I have a few more questions. I'll make a third video.